Welcome to Shop for My Garage. Today working with World Car Auto Group. And today we're looking at this CX30, Mazda CX30. Customers complaining about in-network malfunction. And it's not really a malfunction. And we're gonna get into that and I'll show you how we can finally get rid of this menace coming right up. <laughs> oh no. What is the in vehicle network? Why does it have a malfunction? And I mean, what does it do? Why do we even have it? So the in-network system is actually talking about the telematics communication unit. And what that does, that's part of your Mazda Connect system. Uh, the Mazda Connect system is a system that you can buy into uh, that will um, provide you with certain uh, um, kind of like a, a assistant in your vehicle. Uh, you can use it uh, with an app on your phone. You can start your vehicle like a remote start. You can uh, use it to uh, make phone calls. You can uh, it can uh, alert uh, or call 911 for you if the vehicle's in a wreck. It can do all kinds of stuff, and it is actually something that comes free for the first three years that uh, you have the vehicle and then after that you have to pay uh, to keep into that uh, system and I, I can't tell you how much it costs because I've never done it myself but what happens is the system once it's it's past that three years or it, maybe it's been disconnected or something like that when that happens this in network uh, malfunction in vehicle network malfunction will show up and it's not an actual malfunction with the vehicle it just means the, the te telematic communication unit needs to be updated and uh, I'll, I'll show you that um, it's not something that uh, you have to use but even if you've never used it uh, after the three-year period uh, this can happen sometimes it can happen before the three year period and uh, that has to do with uh, the person that sold the vehicle to you and maybe they didn't send the proper information to Mazda properly or within a certain amount of time or whatever. But um, let's look into this and, and see why is this happening. This here is a service alert uh, which uh, basically lets us know what uh, connected services are. This is uh, about uh, Mazda connected services, frequently asked questions. And I've only actually printed out the first two pages because this is 40 pages long. So this uh, basically tells you which vehicles are applicable to have this, this service. And one of the things, you know, people wonder what's, uh, what's included. You know, wh why do you have it? And uh, like I said, it's uh, like a personal assistant um, for your Mazda. You can uh, access the health, uh, health report, remotely start your vehicle, lock and unlock the doors, and, and uh, do a bunch more. Um, and it comes with the first three years of ownership. Um, then after that, you have to, have to pay for it. You know, what, what are the benefits? Um, and uh, it, one of the things is it's monitoring your vehicle status um, nearly everywhere you go. Um, and um, that is something that is helpful for technicians if you actually have an issue with it. Uh, right here, this is a bulletin that basically um, is telling us what's going on. Why are we having this uh, in-network uh, malfunction? And it says some vehicles may exhibit in-network malfunction message appearing in the instrument cluster with this DTC U3000 uh, colon 04. It's a telematics communication unit internal malfunction um, stored after the connected service uh, contract has been discontinued. 
Um, so they're saying it's uh, caused by improper uh, control software and basically the TCU, the uh, Telematics Communication Unit, um, uh, the software has been updated. So basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a software update. Uh, we're gonna update the TCU. One of the benefits of having uh, the Mazda Connect system connected up that I've seen, it's basically the only one that I've seen, I mean, it's cool that you can remote start your vehicle, you can lock and unlock the doors. As a matter of fact, I've had a customer lock their keys in the vehicle here in the shop because they use their app when they're at phone at night. For some reason, they locked their vehicle, came in in the morning, couldn't get into the vehicle, had to call the customer, they had to unlock the door. <laughs> so. Uh, but one of the benefits is if you have a problem with your vehicle and it's setting a code so, or, or say it's having an intermittent issue that it'll set a code and then it'll, uh, it'll clear and you got to check engine light the next day you don't and then a couple days later you do and you don't and uh, you bring the vehicle into a service and it's checked out and there's no codes the technician can actually go into the Mazda Connected Services and they can see when this code came up, what the code is, what was going on. Uh, it has your freeze frame data and uh, information in it as to what the vehicle was doing when this happened. And this could benefit getting the vehicle repaired and repaired you know, quicker than a technician saying, hey, I can't duplicate the issue. So that is uh, a really cool benefit to have. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to um, go ahead and program the TCU. We're going to check to make sure it has a code. So I drove the vehicle and it does not have in-network uh, malfunction appearing on the dashboard. Not right now. And if some of y'all have had this issue, you've noticed that, yeah, it'll come on and then it's not there and then it comes on and people have, you know, disconnecting batteries and pulling fuses and doing all kinds of stuff to get rid of this. You're not going to be able to get rid of it until the TCU is actually programmed to the latest version. And we're gonna uh, go ahead and hook up the scanner to it. Uh, we're gonna use MDARS. We're gonna uh, look at it and we're gonna make sure it has that code in there. And uh, we'll see that code. And uh, then we can uh, do the update. Uh, whether it has a code or not, I'm just gonna check and see what version the, the system's at and see if uh, it can take the update. And it's really easy. You use a little flash drive, stick the flash drive in there and it will show what the flash drive version is and what the version in there is. And if it needs to be updated, we just hit update. And I'll show you, it's pretty easy to do. The first thing that we are going to need to do is hook up this battery right here. We're gonna hook this charger up to the battery and we are going to make sure that we supply an, an ample amount of power to the vehicle so we don't want the vehicle to in any way uh, lose power while doing this uh, update. And it's the same way with any update that you do in Mazda. Uh, and any vehicle actually if you're doing some kind of update always make sure that you got a good amount of power going to the vehicle and uh, if y'all have seen some of my other videos you may have seen this before I'm gonna go to reflash right here and uh, this does not have a just battery this is actually it is a 550 cold cranking amp RC 105 so we're gonna go to cold cranking amps and Put in 550, done, start reflash, and then it's going to um, go ahead and um, start, uh, start applying power. Okay, here we are at the MDAR system, and I need to get this hooked up to this vehicle. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. Okay, I'm going to get this hooked up. The data link connector is right up in there. Hook that up right there. Turn the key on. And turn the headlights off because we don't need those. And I'm just gonna hit start right here. And it's gonna go through some checks. 
it takes a little while for this to communicate but one of the cool things about the uh, Mazda Diagnostic Repair software is as soon as it goes in like right out of the gate the first thing it does is it checks codes and it will tell you if there's any codes in any system so uh, what we're looking for is a code for the TCU for the uh, telematic communication unit and um, if it has uh, this particular code, then we know we need to do the update. But like I said, if it needs an update, we're gonna do it, you know, whether it has a code set or not, because there's no sense in, uh, just, you know, <laughs> sending it on its way and saying, hey, you know, we couldn't duplicate your concern or whatever. We know what the problem is. So let's just do it and get it done. Um, that, so I don't understand. I've been on the forums, you know, not that I go on the forums very much. I honestly don't like going on there because I've tried to help people on those forums before and just for them to say, hey, you don't know what you're talking about, you know. So, you know, it's why, why waste the time. Um, okay, so look, it does have a code right there in the TCU. It's got some other codes set too, um, but we're going to check this right here and it, that that is the code right there that's the code that we're looking for for the telematics uh, control unit and it, and it says, uh, says system internal failures but um we know we know why it's, why it's doing that um so uh this is good because uh, I, i'm going to go ahead and um you know print this out and uh make a copy of it and it's easier for me to just attach it to the repair order and um, that is um, proof, you know, that um, it did have it and, you know, easier to uh, get paid because this is actually covered under warranty. If the vehicle's covered under warranty, this uh, program that we're gonna do, and I have the flash drive right here, um, it, it's, it's covered under warranty. So if you got this issue and your vehicle's covered under warranty, then, you know, take it in there, you know? If you had this issue, you know, and you've run into weird things or whatever or you've tried to disconnect your battery pull fuses and stuff like that you know uh run around down in the comments let me know you know how how did that work out for you you know are you still having the issue have you uh taken it in and had it had this done and still had the issue afterwards because um this software is not the only reason why this um fault may come up but it's the most common and um you know, uh, there's this possibility that maybe if they did an update, they didn't update it to the latest and greatest. Maybe uh, they didn't know that uh, there was a, a better update out there. Um, Mazda has this on their, uh, on our uh, website that we can download and put it onto a flash drive. And, um, you know, maybe uh, the technician didn't uh, do the flash drive right. It can't be anything this is uh 32 gigs and, and it's not 32 gigs of, of information on here but you can't really go much over that um because it has to this flash drive has to be um uh, formatted to fat 32 so if you have a flash drive that's a lot bigger 128 gig or something it won't it won't format to fat 32 it'll format to like ntfs or something like that and you can't use those it, it won't you try and use it and it'll it'll have a um uh, a fault trying to um upload the software don't know why that's just what mazda says so it has to be this uh type of flash drive so um let's uh let's get in here and uh do the update the first thing that I'm going to check on this is, uh, does the uh, vehicle have a navigation uh, card? And I know that it does because I saw the navigation pop up on the screen whenever I turned the key on before. So we want to take that card out. Not that it's going to do any damage to it, but it's, it's just recommended uh, by Mazda that anytime you do an update to a system like this, even if you're doing the Connect software update, you know, on the other uh, generation before this, uh, they always recommend that if it has a navigation SD card, pull that out first. So that's what I'm going to do. I'll get in here and pull this card out. Let's see if I can use my other hand. So there's a customer's card and I'm gonna just stick it right there for now. And then I'm gonna stick in this flash drive, just like that. And I'm gonna turn the key on, 
turn the headlights off and the uh, we have uh, power going to the battery so we don't have to worry about it dying or anything and whenever you do connect software updates um, you can uh, usually do it with it running but I found with the telematics control module unit or whatever it is um, it doesn't really work right and you can actually have failures uh, with the engine running so you have to make sure that you have um, power going to your battery so that it won't die or anything like that and you definitely don't want that to happen you want to have problems with your uh, your uh, telematics control unit um, because you got halfway through a program and the battery died uh, so what I'm gonna do is it's kind of the same way as doing a um, a um, uh, connect software update I need to hit this button and hold it down and what that did is it basically made this screen go blank if I hit it again and hold it then the screen will come up so if you have one of these vehicles you just want to turn the screen off then hitting this button and holding it will make that screen go blank uh, so I'm gonna hold this until the screen goes blank then I'm gonna touch this button right here and this button right here at the same time I have to keep this button down so then I'm going to touch both of these and hold them at the same time and then this uh, factory service inspection came up on the screen so um, I am going to go uh, I'm just uh, going to scroll with this uh, knob right here I'm going to go to uh, device uh, program update click on that uh, system update and then it's choosing the source well the source is a usb um, flash drive that i put in there so i click on that and then you can see that the current version um, is uh, 10004 and the version we're putting in is 10019 so it's uh, definitely needs to be updated so i'm gonna uh, hit the button again it says uh, uh update the uh telematics unit yes i will hit ok and files are loaded and ready to begin hit OK and this will take a little while So now while this thing is updating, uh, there's something that uh, it, it is uh, popping up on the screen here. Now the in-network malfunction have vehicle inspected, and more than likely that's uh, probably happening, uh, especially right now because uh, we're doing the software update. So it is I this this module is isolating itself from uh, the rest of the vehicle, and uh, the other modules can see, hey, there's something going on with our. Uh, in vehicle network and so that's why it's just uh, keeps popping up and popping up um, this is gonna take a while so uh, whenever it's uh, finished uh, we'll come on back and I'll show you how we can complete this okay it's complete and you can tell that that it is just by the way that it is and it shows that it has been completed so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit this button and hold it down and that should uh, reboot the system. Okay, there it is, it's rebooting. And as soon as it's uh, finished rebooting, I'm going to pull this flash drive out. So it's booting up and I'm going to pull out the flash drive. Okay, so now I am going to turn the vehicle off so I can insert the customer's SD card. And I'm going to turn it on. Turn off the headlights because we don't need those. I'm going to go back into here. I'm going to hold this down, push these down. 
so it's those three right there and we're gonna go look at the service information uh, TCU link information and I can scroll down and there it is right there the software version and I don't know if you can see that with the screen the way it is uh, but yeah, the software uh, version, it's the right version. It's the one that we just put in. So we just uh, want to double check and make sure that it's actually in there. And now um, I can exit. I'll just hit this exit button a bunch of times and uh, end the diag mode. And it will reboot. And what we need to do is go in and clear these codes. So... I'm um, going to hit this uh, little thing that looks like a little broom or sweep or whatever. And so are you sure you want to clear all the codes? Yes. And it will go through and it will clear them. So clear is complete. Hit next. Now it's going to recheck and see if there are any other codes that uh, set after that. We got all green, so it's good. Everything's good. And that is pretty much it. The, um, we did the telematic control unit update and it is updated and um, there are no more code sets. So uh, it will not display that information on the screen anymore. Um, and that's uh, pretty much it. It's uh, pretty, pretty quick, pretty, pretty easy. Um, and it should be easy for your dealership to do that too. Uh, don't let them tell you that it's going to take all day because it ain't, you know. Usually what takes all day is them getting to your vehicle because they got like, you know, 100 vehicles in front of you. But um, no, it doesn't take that long to do this. Uh, so uh, if you had any issues with this, uh, like I said, run around down in the comments. I'd love to hear about it. And uh, if you're not subscribed, uh, please think about subscribing because, uh, I mean, it's free. You know, and uh, you get uh, entertained by flash drives and stuff like that. So, uh, for Shop Farmer Garage and uh, World Car Auto Group, uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.